Industrial facilities use steam, both for heating and for performing various process operations. As the steam gives up heat, it cools and forms droplets of water called condensate. Accumulated condensate in a steam system's piping can cause a number of costly problems. So to maintain efficient, reliable operation of a steam system, condensate must be removed without allowing valuable steam to escape. A device that's commonly used for this purpose is a steam trap. Steam is a vapor that's formed from water. The condensate that's formed as steam cools is a liquid that's heavier than the steam. In a steam system, the relatively heavy condensate will drain to the system's low points. So steam traps are usually installed at these locations to remove the condensate. Removing the condensate is important because accumulated condensate in a steam system can cause a number of problems. Under low temperature conditions, condensate can freeze in piping, resulting in damage such as burst pipes and costly shutdowns. Accumulated condensate can also cause water hammer. Water hammer is the condition that occurs when condensate is carried along with the steam inside a system's piping and slams into the wall of a pipe, particularly around bends. This action can break or crack the pipe. Condensate that builds up in a steam system's pipes also impedes the transfer of heat from the steam and takes up space that could otherwise be occupied by steam. Both of these actions reduce the efficiency of the steam system. Two types of steam are normally associated with industrial steam systems. One type is live steam, which is the steam that's used for heating or for process operations. Live steam is produced by heating water to the appropriate saturation temperature. The saturation temperature is the water's boiling temperature for an existing pressure. Another type of steam that's associated with industrial steam systems is flash steam. Flash steam is normally produced when sufficiently hot condensate that's under relatively high pressure is discharged to the atmosphere or into a lower pressure line. The decrease in pressure causes some of the discharged hot condensate to flash into steam. The production of flash steam when a steam trap discharges is generally a normal part of trap operation. Steam traps must also be able to remove air and non-condensable gases that could build up in the trap and keep it from working. Air and other gases also make a trap more susceptible to corrosion. For example, Carbon dioxide is one of the most common non-condensable gases in steam systems. When carbon dioxide mixes with condensate, carbonic acid, which can corrode metal pipes and trap components, is produced. To maintain system efficiency, a steam trap must be able to remove condensate, air, and other gases quickly. The trap must also be able to respond promptly to changing conditions in the system. In most facilities, the rate at which steam condenses in a system varies considerably. If the steam traps in the system can't effectively respond to these variations, the traps will either discharge live steam or they'll leave condensate in the steam lines. Both of these situations can create problems and reduce system efficiency. A steam trap is usually an integral part of a steam trap station, which includes one or more steam traps as well as associated valves, piping, and related components. In turn, multiple steam trap stations may be used to remove condensate from a facility's steam system. We'll use this illustration to provide an overview of the components that are included in a typical steam trap station. A drip line connects to the lowest point of the steam line or process equipment through which live steam moves. Condensate collects in the drip line. A typical drip line also includes a dirt pocket to trap some of the larger particles of dirt or scale that may be dislodged in the steam lines or the drip line. An inlet valve isolates the steam trap inlet from the steam line. A strainer near the inlet valve prevents dirt and scale from entering the steam trap. 
A blow-down valve on the strainer can be opened to enable the strainer to be cleaned or blown down by directing flow back through the strainer to the atmosphere. The next component is the steam trap. It drains condensate from the system while preventing the escape of live steam. It may also remove non-condensable gases and some air. Downstream of the trap is a test connection with a valve. The test valve can be opened to see whether the fluid that the trap is passing is steam or condensate. An outlet valve separates the steam trap from the downstream piping. The inlet valve and the outlet valve are isolation valves that can be used to block off or isolate the steam trap from the steam line. This is usually necessary when the trap must be repaired or replaced. A bypass line is also included in many steam trap stations. A valve in the bypass line enables workers to bypass the entire steam trap station if necessary. The bypass valve is usually opened when there is a suspected problem with the trap. Opening the valve may be necessary to keep the facility operating, but as long as the bypass valve is left open, steam blows through the bypass and the efficiency of the steam system is reduced. Sometimes a steam trap is installed in the bypass line. Then, if the main trap fails, the bypass trap can be put into service and the problem of blowing steam through the bypass line is eliminated.